Dave Palumbo here at the White Plains Reptile Show 2014. Uh, we just got here. We're about to go explore some of the booths, see what we might take home today in the way of purchases as well as in the way of wow factor. You know, sometimes we just like to look at things, see what's going on, see what the newest snake morphs are, the newest reptiles out there, and who knows what else they got here. So guys, stay tuned. Follow me around. Let's see what they got here in White Plains. All right, I'm standing here at Nice Balls. Not the balls that you think. We're talking about ball pythons. And if you guys look over here, we got some amazing looking snakes. This is my favorite, the Enchi albino. Look at that. You can see the, the oranges and the yellows in it. This is a real, as we call, designer snake. You know, then obviously last year when I came, we thought albinos were a big deal. Now we have pastel albinos. We have black pastel albinos. We have lavender albinos, which have some purple in them, if you look. It's really, really cool. I mean, you can go crazy here with all the amazing snakes. I love this albino stinger up there as well. With the, you see them with the red eyes and then the nice, cool-looking yellowish coloration. Look at this caramel uh, albino. This is just an, an incredible-looking snake. I love that rich, creamy uh, caramel-looking coloring. And, you know, we can go crazy. If you look over there, you see the white snake. That's, that's what we call a white diamond or a russo leucistic. It's, it's got blue eyes. It's, got, it's all white. I'm going to talk to a little our, our snake breeders over here. Now, this is uh, Hunter. Hunter, say hello. Hi. It's Hunter. Uh, we're here at Nice Balls. Um, I'm interested in competing in bodybuilding right now. I'm doing powerlifting training. We always find bodybuilders. No matter where we go, we find someone who's interested in bodybuilding. 16 years old, right? Yep, 16 years old. Um, I'm standing at 198 to 200. I fluctuate. Um, right now, just doing powerlifting training, but I'm thinking about doing bodybuilding soon in the near future. Now, is it true that you actually won a free training session with Kevin English? Yes, I did. I went to an MPC show. Um, I don't remember how long ago. It was when I first started training. You must have been really young. Yeah, I was. It was I was 15. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how was it to train with Kevin English? It was crazy. I, I decided to do legs. It was the worst m mistake I've ever done in my life. Were you sick the next day? For a week or two. I'll tell you that. It was at least a week or two. I was, I was done. My knees hurt. They were aching. My legs were just so sore. So. Do you love the snakes too? Are you into breeding them yourself? Um, I, don't, I volunteer with them. I have pets at my house, but I just enjoy it so much. I love animals. So. We're going to come back a little later because I might actually purchase something. Uh, I don't know. i got to look around first, but I appreciate all the input, and good luck with the bodybuilding. All right, I'm over here with Tony from Exotic Snakes, and I, I have a question because I've never, I don't really know what this is. I've never seen this snake. Okay, so these are Nelsonis, yeah. or also called Sinaloans, and uh, these are kind of special. What these are, they have a clear belly. Right. I don't know if you could see that. It's a clear belly, and their pattern is pretty different. Every one is different, and it has kind of an albino tail. So I call them striped, splotched Nelsons or clowns. How big do these things get? These will get about three feet, but not very heavy. It's a, it's a milk snake. Oh, it is a milk snake. I it's thought it looked like snake. a milk snake. Yep, it's a milk snake. And but it's got an unusual morph. Yes, it's an unusual morph. Very rare. There's only two or three people who have these. And uh, it's originally Usually milk snakes are not that expensive, and this is a pretty expensive pair, so I'm assuming it's very special. Yes, and you, I don't know if you got a picture of the belly. You know, usually it's the same color all the way around, but this is uh, quite different. And again, everyone is like a snowflake. Everyone's different. Now, what, what adults did you use to produce these two? Like, what did they look like? I could actually show you a picture. So this would be the albino version of that. That's awesome. That's gorgeous. And this is a more enhanced version where you could see that that pied or that white albino type of tail and all the different patterns. And that's the uh, father. That is not the mother, but that's an albino version of it. Now, when you first saw the babies come out, were you pretty like, like were you like, yes? Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm excited. Year, huh? Yep, and this year I want to do more of the albinos. I, I would think that this would be a very popular uh, very morph. Much, yep. I didn't want to bring it today. It's cold outside, right. but I brought these. What's, what's your website? Exoticsnakes.com. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about carpet pythons. These are not Burmese pythons. They're not giant pythons. They're carpet pythons. Explain to me what a carpet python is and, and, and how it differs for like the pythons that we're, we're used to seeing. The carpet pythons are from Australia, and they're a mid-sized python, so they don't get as big as, say, your berms and your, your retics like that, and they are a fairly slender animal. 
So when you say slender, how big did they get when they're full grown, like thickness wise? Oh, uh, thickness wise, oh gosh, you know, about this big around, not not too big. Um, they are semi arboreal snakes, so they are up in the trees or down the ground, and they're, they're, they cover a, a big area of their habitat. So what do they eat? Because they're in the trees, do they eat birds or are they still they're, rodents? They're pretty opportunistic. They eat rodents, they eat birds, anything they can really grab a hold of with their teeth. So, now, well, Something you mentioned to me that's interesting is that when they're babies, they're, they're kind of a little nasty and defensive, and then as they get older, they kind of get very brash. Yes, as, as babies, everything's looking to eat them. So they're very defensive. As they get older, they get some size to them, not so defensive anymore they're a little bit more confident and they can they can handle themselves a little What's bit better. What's like the wild type looking carpet python because I'm looking at the zebra tiger and he's awesome I can't imagine that's something you would find in nature. No this this is something definitely this captive born and bred with a, a lot of um, thought and process went into creating this one. The one below it right there is a wild type and that's what that's what you're gonna see primarily out in the wild. Now, um, when you breed these things um, I have to imagine that you know you have to sit there and try to figure out what you're going to create in your head, okay. and then hope it comes to fruition. What was like the, the 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 carpet python that excited you the most when it was born? Oh gosh, um, it would have to be uh, the zebra, tiger jags. It, that, that was really exciting when that when that one came out. When you see, because you know it's kind of like you hit you're rubbing off a lottery ticket. Oh, yeah. When the egg opens up, you see what you got. Oh yeah, I mean you don't know what you're going to have until because and the you get so many different ones in one clutch, so you're going to get. You know, some that look like this, some that look normal, some that look not so. You know, it, it's a whole mixed bag of, of babies. What's your website so the people can check it out? Uh, EastCoastSerpents.net. All right, we're over here at the chameleon booth. Um, I want you to look at this chameleon. This is an Umbilibi chameleon. Now, all these chameleons are named after the town where they're found, actually. So they have different names, but they're really just named after where they discover them. Look at the colors. A lot of people think that chameleons, you know, change color if you put them next to different colors. That's not really true. They can kind of blend a little bit, but they, they don't. The colors they have are the color they, they have. Um, if you look over here, this guy's like more red. The other guy was more blue. They're, they're super cool. And if you look, they have a, a cool prehensile tail. Let's, let's look down here at these guys hanging from the top. You know, they can almost grip things with their tail. A lot of people like these Jackson's chameleons because they got the horns. You see those horns? It looks like almost like a Triceratops dinosaur. And they're just like super cool. They can kind of hold on the upside down. They can look at them. They're walking on the screen on the side. They almost look like they can defy gravity. And uh, they've become much more popular pets recently. Once again, they got those cool, cool eyes. They're kind of like a periscope. They can kind of like just look anywhere they want, any any direction they want without actually moving. Which would which would certainly be good for my dad because my dad doesn't like to move around that much. If he had eyes behind his head, he could kind of check out what's going on without actually getting out of his chair. So, um, once again, reptiles really seem to adapt very well to the environment. They do different weird things. Once again, but they all need heat. They're cold-blooded reptiles and that means that they need to thermoregulate according to the heat source that they're presented with that's why it's very warm in this reptile fair let's see what else we can find all right we're over here at, at a uh, table that sells geckos now geckos you think of it from the geico commercial like just a real common looking you know reptile but if you look at these geckos take a look you could see some of the most incredible color morphs you've ever seen i mean i mean look at these guys i mean look at the look at the blue over his eye look at that tail the pink tail um, they, they, they have so many different varieties. I'm sure they all have different names. Look at the oranges in this one and the spots on this guy's head. I mean, each one is specifically bred with a different morph, with a different name. And, I mean, they're just, they're just really incredible. To me, these are, if I have to buy a, re a reptile that's easy to keep and that looks cool, I would go with the gecko if I was going to get this. If I, wasn't, if I wasn't so crazy into snakes, I would go with geckos. I mean, this, this look at that. It looks like a... Um, uh, when you go to the southwest, like Arizona, and you see you buy one of those rugs, that's, it looks like a rug. It's so decorated so nicely. Uh, just tr truly incredible, the world of reptiles, how they've changed with the different morphs and the breeding. The, the breeders are just they're better geneticists than our geneticists. Uh, if, if we could do this with humans, imagine, <laughs> imagine what we would look like. But the color morphs are just amazing, and, and it just the science gets better and better from year to year. Just one year I've come here, and I see all new reptiles that I've never seen from the year before. So that tells you how quickly the science is evolving. All right, I want to show you guys something really special, a scaleless rat snake. Take a look at this. What's your name? Aviana. Aviana. Is that the coolest thing you've ever felt? Yeah. It's, I, you, never, I never touched one before. Do you like a scaleless better than the regular scaled ones? Um... I don't know. I don't really like how they feel. Yeah, it's I don't like either. Little, uh, it's, a, it's weird. It's like velvet, right? Yeah. 
this guy, I think this guy wants to go home with me. He's like getting in my pocket here. This is, if you look, there's no scales in this thing. It's completely scaleless, and he, uh, I guess he doesn't miss the scales. Now, now they're going to ball pythons that are scaleless, but uh, he's uh, he's very friendly. And uh, sometimes rat snakes bite. Have you ever held a rat snake? No. No, this is my first time. Also, only one in a long time, at least. At least this is my first scaleless one. So you see. The genetics of reptiles just keep on changing and changing. All right, let's take a look at the green tree pythons. They're a little nasty. They are what they're known as arboreal pythons. They like to hang in the trees. Now, they're going to be, these are on the ground because they're in little canisters, but take a look. Thank you. And you can look at this green tree python. That's what they look like when they kind of get a little older. This is three years old. Um, now, when they're younger, they have different colors. You see, they're oranges. Um, and what happens is as they get bigger, they, they change color. Um, but they, look at even this one, look at this Bioc green tree python. Beautiful when it's younger and it just completely changes color as it gets older and it turns green. Uh, here's another one, here's one that's in the process of changing. It's a high yellow, you can see the yellow now the, coming in where the green was and it eventually will turn completely green. But uh, and here are the real little baby ones. And they're so cute, everyone like wants to get one of these, but what you gotta realize is these pythons are a little nasty, they like to bite. They like to strike a little bit. They're kind of defensive, so you got to know if you're going to get one of these, they might give you a little nip here and there. And I know a lot of people are not too interested in getting bitten by snakes. <laughs> All right, I'm standing here with Rick from Outback Reptiles. Last year we, we came by here and we, was, we looked at the Brazilian rainbow boas, and we saw that there were some very expensive ones that were het for albinism, which means that they could produce albinos when they're bred. We don't know if they did. We came back this year and we see some amazing albinos. Talk to me a little bit about what it was like being the first to produce these? It's pretty awesome. It's, it was years in the making from an original albino male we found that we had to breed several generations back so to... You found uh, it in, in the wild. In the wild, bred it to normal females, got hets that carry the gene, bred those hets back eventually, and this year finally uh, produced albinos, proved out that obviously the albino is a recessive trait, and also it's just nice to see a project come to fruition like this. So like if I bought one of these for $35,000 and I bred it to a, a regular rainbow, I could produce hets and then produce my own albinos. Right, and what we expect is that we're going to probably sell females with het males this year, so then people would be able to breed 50%. those, you know, breed those exactly and get 50% albinos uh, two, three years from now. That, and that's the quickest way. Now, yeah, I was going to say, how long will it take this snake to, to get to maturity? About three years on a female. Uh, about two years on a male. Okay, and how big will they actually get? Because these are tiny right yeah, now. Five, six feet, and uh, you know maybe like silver dollar size around. That's amazing. Now, what what are you feeding these right now? A little, little right bit. now. Fuzzies? Uh, yep, fuzzies exactly. And wh how many? How often do you have to once, feed something? Once, I start them slow once a week. Once you put some size on them, you can kind of start to get them a little faster. But early on, you don't want to overdo it. Do, do people tend to overfeed the babies because they get rambunctious? I think some yeah. So. yeah, it's it's tempting because you want to mess yeah. with them all the time. Right, you right. want you want to do something with them. You know, you want them to grow. So, but it's better I think take it slow till they get to a kind of a more moderate size. Now, what people don't realize is they like, might think, well, 35000 for a snake, that's outrageous. But the reason why they're so expensive is because obviously they're selling for a lot because they're unique. Right. The rarity of it being the first time around. And quite honestly, in a project like this, if you get in and, if you get in the first year or two, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to make money unless a catastrophe happens. But Talk to me what it was like when that egg hatched for the first time and you saw it. Actually, this oh, is live birth. Right. Right. So actually, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm out of my element. So I knew what the due dates were, so you kind of like looking in there every hour or so. You saw it crawl out, what'd you do? I, you know, it's I well, filmed it for one. But, high five? Uh, but it was, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's it's a, it's just, you're kind of like, all right. It's, it's a huge sigh of relief, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything finally worked. Didn't you, you get know? really nervous? Like, oh my God, I got to make sure this thing is healthy right. and you start being you like, a, like, a, like a little glass uh, porcelain right. doll or something. You know, you don't want to, you know, do anything with it. But, you know, it's just as hardy as anything else. So it's really not a big deal. If people can't get to the reptile show and they want to purchase, how many of these do you have actually available? Uh, probably just a couple females mm -hmm. with het males this year and then pairs of hats as well too. What's the website? Uh, Outback Reptiles. <laughs> Alright, I'm standing here holding a frilled dragon, bearded dragon. Very cool. He's He's got like sticky, now I know why they can climb upside down because he's got sticky paws. He stuck to me basically. I bet if I turned him upside down he wouldn't fall. See? It's pretty cool. And uh, this is what you find here at the uh, reptile fair here in White Plains. And you see the little frilling here? I guess that's why they call it frilled. He can puff his neck out like a little dinosaur if he wants to. But this is a baby. This thing will get to how big will he get? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half, three feet. I mean, that years. takes 12 years, though. That's like this big. You know, that's monstrous. That's dinosaurish, you know. So it's a, it's a big commitment. You know, you might have to, I'd have to leave him in my will probably, you know, to someone who that's how long he's going to live. I got a crested gecko, crested gecko here. He's got like Velcro paws. I think he likes me. They're a little uh, aggressive. What's your name again? Tony. Tony. 
Look at this. Give me a front double bicep. I haven't been on stage in five years. Come on, give me a, give me a bicep shot. I love to see muscle here at the reptile show. <laughs> this is a big guy, too. What's your name? John. I know you, don't I? Yeah. You look familiar to me. Joe Carini makes you like Lou Ferrigno. I think so, yeah. Yeah, he does look like Lou Ferrigno. And Andre the Giant a little bit, too, with the, with the haircut. Uh, so you guys breed these things? Yeah. What else do you breed aside from geckos? The bearded dragons? Any pythons or anything? No, not anymore. Right, this guy's looking to... He jumps all over the place. Yeah, he's, 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 he's enjoying himself here. I must have crickets in my pocket or something like that. <laughs> Wait, do you guys have a website? Yes, GG's Geckos. Right on Facebook. It's a lot easier than paying. All right, check him out. And uh, you might even see him on a bodybuilding stage one of these days. We can get these guys to diet down. All right, I'm over here at Reptile Kingdom where I see some frogs. I'm not a big frog fanatic, but I love the Pac-Man frogs. You see these Pac-Man frogs? They're huge. They get big. These things will eat mice, rats. Can't really see them. Maybe we can get the uh, someone to open one of these up and show us. You like that? Ew. It's a bit, those are big frogs, huh? Can, we, can, we, can you open one of these up so we can see them? This is an albino Pac-Man frog. He's very small right now, but these things get enormous. They get, like, you can't even imagine how big, and they will eat pretty much anything that you give them. Mice, rats, uh, fro other frogs themselves, and uh, they're just the coolest things, but they, they don't really do very much other than eat, which is kind of like a bodybuilder, if you think about it, because all we do is kind of sit around, eat, and then we, uh, we wait for the next meal. I'm standing here with Vin Russo. Best known for his Russo leucistic ball python. He's written the book of boa constrictors. You don't need to know anything else other than this book. The irony of this whole interview is that when I came over here and I met him for the first time, I realized it wasn't the first time. We worked in Petland Discounts together in 1986. We, he had long hair. My hair was much longer, too. And it, it's, it's an incredible coincidence that it's almost too good to be coincidence. That is, that is true. <laughs> you became one of the, the most well-known boa and ball python breeders in the world. Yes. Um, I'm up there with the top ten, I say. And I remember you were a real snake fanatic back then. I actually learned a lot of all the nomenclature from you back uh, when we were 18 years old. Yeah, I've been in the snake since I'm a kid, so yeah. it's, it's become a lifestyle and now my my business. Yeah. So. Show me your Russo leucistic, which right now is it's kind of like old news by now. But this, you invented this, or you came up with it first. Explain to me. Did you know this? you'd get a snake that looked like this? And when it first came out, what did you think? You must have been like, holy mackerel. I, I didn't know I was going to get this. I basically found a normal ball python like this in a shipment of wild-caught ball pythons. Right. But this is a little different from normal. It's got a lot more yellow in it than a normal. And what is this called? This is a het leucistic. Okay. Now, I didn't, um, I didn't know it was a het leucistic when I got it. I thought it was just a nice-looking normal. Right. So when I bred it, half of its babies came out just like it. Okay. That nice yellow, light yellow color. Then when I bred the nice yellow colored snakes to each other, I made the first leucistic. That was 2001. And you didn't, I'm sure I didn't know what the I hell was going on. I have the faintest idea. I, I couldn't believe Genetically, it. what is going on? Explain to our, our viewers. Well, you've got an incomplete dominant gene, meaning that um, the recessive morph has a visual indicator of being Different. a gene carrier for the leucistic. So this compared to a normal ball python is about five shades lighter. Right. So, um... You know, it's it's in reality. Uh, You're creating a super gene. You got two of those those hats. The genes. pure white snake is the super form, exactly. Now we've seen this is a this is a pure white snake with blue eyes. We've seen ones with black eyes. What's the difference? Um, the black-eyed snakes are called um, super fires, and their their het is called a fire. It's a it's a different trait. It's not allelic with this particular snake. So if you bred a black-eyed leucistic to a blue-eyed, you wouldn't get leucistics. You'd get double recessives or double normal lookings. So it's a completely different different trait. Yeah. How long did it take you to write this book? Which everyone is, it says this is the book of Boas you gotta read. It took me about six years just to write it. Physically write it. Mm -hmm. Sit down and and type it out. When you re go back and look it over again, do you say, I did a good job, or do you feel like you could do better? You know, believe it or not, when I was finally finished with that, I did say to myself, wow, that came out pretty good, and I'm glad I put the time and energy into it. And I have not yet said to myself, wow, I missed something, or I should have done that, I should have did this. I took my time and did it exactly the way I wanted it. To I'm be. about halfway done with it, and I love it. And uh, I want to say it's great seeing you and meeting you again, and uh, Thanks, hopefully man. we'll uh, remain friends.
definitely. We're standing here with Brian Barczyk from Snake Bites TV. You guys who watch YouTube videos will know this guy. He is like the Dave Palumbo of the reptile world. I promise you that. It's great meeting you. It's awesome meeting you too. Hey, you're in my world now. What do you think about these reptiles, huh? I, I love it. You know, I sense your passion when you talk about them on the air. You get people excited. I get excited about it. And then I get my people excited about it. And I try to do the same thing for the bodybuilding industry. You know, you could just tell that you love what you do. Yeah, I tell you, since I was a kid, I've told this story many times. My first memory as a kid ever when I was two years old was of a snake at a zoo. That's not so my weird. mom, not my dad, not my siblings, a snake. And how old were you? I was two years old. And I tell you what, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember the snake, the cage, everything about it. So I've been so passionate about these animals ever since I can remember. Now, we all know that reptiles are an addiction, just like tattoos are. I know that's your newest tattoo. And, and, and working out now, right? Yeah, right. I mean, hey, guys like you are inspiring me to hopefully better my body. But yeah, you're right. Reptiles are an addiction. I always say it. it's like a potato chip. You can't get one. Right, you know right. what I mean? Just like, what was the first snake you had? You know, this is crazy. I begged my mom till I was 15 years to have a snake. Every summer, I would go out and collect garter snakes and have to keep them in the garage because I could not bring them in the house. And finally, when I was 15 years old, believe it or not, she said, all right, for your birthday, you can have a snake. Mm -hmm. And I bought a Burmese python. Now, these are the monsters. They get yeah, of 18, course. 18 foot long. And she let me buy a Burmese python. She didn't know, obviously. I don't think I knew. Right. I, was, I just wanted a snake. And what happened was I went to a pet shop, and, and I knew I was going to buy a snake. And that was the only snake they had. for. And I wasn't leaving without no, a snake. No, you had to have something. Yeah, and I, so I was like, I didn't even know how big it got. And then I got it, and I, I started reading. I'm like, which, by the way, I always tell people, please do your research before you buy snakes. Right, Don't right. be like me and buy a Burmese python yeah, yeah. for your first snake. How big did that snake wind up getting? It, it got over 18 foot. Oh, really? What did your mom think when it was getting crazy? <laughs> what was funny is by the time I moved out of my house, and by the way, reptiles actually paid for my first house when I was 20 years old. Really? So, what were you selling that, that, that made you money? Well, you know, all you know, albino Burmese pythons, ironically enough, at the time were going for like a thousand bucks a piece. And these are animals that have 40 to 60 eggs, right, right? right? So I was making tons of money, you know, great money on my mom's basement. <laughs> I was going to college and I was making more money and I was like, why am I? I'm just going to do what I love. But uh, yeah. at that point, when I moved out, my mom's basement, I had 50 Burmese pythons that were like 50? 50 Burmese pythons that were all like 15 foot plus and then I had a couple hundred other snakes and she wouldn't even go in the basement. I, I don't blame it. Do you still have any of those now in your, in your in your facility in Detroit? I do actually. I have a girl named Satan who's a, a oh, big... that's one of the originals? That's one of the originals and, I, and then of course now I have Sunshine. She's not one of the originals but she's been around for six or seven years. That's a big girl. So uh, so yeah, I have a handful of the original animals and, and they're amazing. Did you ever think, because you were such a snake guy that you'd start getting into other reptiles like I noticed now you have uh, geckos and you have uh, bearded dragons. You know, it's funny. Legged things have become a passion of mine all of a sudden. I still love the snakes. You know, snakes are always going to be my thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, blue tongue skinks, I'm a nut about blue tongue skinks now. Leopard geckos. Uh, yeah, I, for some reason, monitors. I mean, everything that basically has legs, it seems to really be pushing me in that direction. Is it because of the addiction? Like, I don't have it. I got to have it now. Well, I always say when people say, you know, uh, you know what, what don't you have? And I always say, like, I, I want it all. You know, right, what I mean, it's right. like, what, what, what do I want? I want everything I don't have. You know, and, yeah, me too. And, and, but, but it, within reason. I, I'm, it's not like I'm collecting these like baseball cards. You know, I mean, they are each of these animals is alive, mm -hmm. and I, I respect that life so much. So, uh, but, but you know, I guess the lizards have a little bit more personality. So I've been having a great time interacting with them. Whereas a snake, I mean, I still think they have somewhat of a person, but a snake is a snake. You yeah. know what I mean? Sure. Uh, lizards, they actually do have personality, so you can get to interact with them a little more. I put you on the spot. Last question. Favorite reptile of all time? Well, you know, I, I have to answer it this way. Are you a parent? No, not yet. Okay, so if you had three kids, what would be your favorite kid? Uh, the one that's here? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I, I can't. I love them all. I can never pick a favorite. These are all my babies. Yeah. I can't pick a favorite. Thanks so much, Brian. Hey, thank Brian you. Barczyk, Snake Bite TV. Catch him on YouTube, one of the most popular reptile channels. I'm standing here with Joe from JCP Boas, and I just bought another snake. Uh, this is a beautiful moon glow boa. It's a triple recessive. Explain what the, what the three recessive traits are. What it is, it's an anatheristic albino. Anatheristic means there's no pattern? No color. No color. No color. Albino and hypo. And the hypo means it's just lightened even more. Right, exactly. All combined into one. And albino we know is white. So this is a, this is a very unusual snake. It's got some cool, really cool eyes. I don't know if we can get the eyes around here and take a look at those. And this is going to get how big, Joe? It's a male, they usually get four to six feet. 
it's a, it's a nice size snake. Yes, good handleable snake that doesn't take two people to handle. Great pet quality animal. Show us how you know it's a male. Can you what show I us? Do, sure can. What I do is I do the rub method. The it's rub method. Yeah, it's harmless on the snake. Okay. You do is you hold it, and if you rub your hands down like this, right, you feel two little bumps. Okay. Those are the hemipenes. The hemipenes. Now, now snakes have two penises, right? Yes. Better than one, right? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you, Gave Joe. You twice as much trouble that That's way, right, though. Joe. You're, you're from Connecticut. What's your website? JPCBoas.com. And people can purchase snakes from you. Ship? Yep. This time of the year is tough because of the weather, yeah. but uh, there's, there's shipping. Well, you, they got another reptile show here in White Plains. If you guys want to pick up any reptiles, that's on January 4th, so you might want to come down here and see Joe. Joe, thanks we'll so much. Here. I started off slow. I did some interviews. We showed you what was going on here, and then I lost my mind, and I bought a lot of stuff. I got three snakes, a moon glow boa constrictor, and we got two ball pythons that we'll, I will show and reveal at a later date, in a later in, uh, interview, I should say. And we actually bought frozen mice and frozen, or frozen rats, I should say, because it's a little bit more humane than feeding the, you know, the, the live ones to these snakes. And so we're all stocked up. I feel like I, I, I left my first fitness expo with a bag full of goodies and uh, we get to go home and play with them a little bit. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the whole day and, and meeting some of these celebrities of the reptile world. You know, uh, I might be a celebrity of the bodybuilding world, but these are celebrities of the reptile world. We, we clashed heads, and I think I'm going to be training Brian, Brian Barczyk for an arm wrestling rematch against Athena, uh, the bodybuilder from Canada that we all know, and I'm going to put a little clip in so you know who I'm talking about. And uh, we got him on the line of species nutrition products, and we'll see what if he... We can get a little muscle in those arms and, and get them to win next year. For now, though, I am Dave Palumbo here in White Plains, New York, at the Long Island, or I should say the New York Reptile Show for rxmuscle.com.